Jesus must have been waiting and expecting the Greeks to come. There must be something significant in this as to where the Greeks were not just coming to be tourists, but they were coming to meet Jesus. So why? The Greeks were known for all of their knowledge. What did they know? What did they learn? What did they know about this itinerant preacher? Well, they must have heard. He called Lazarus out of the grave. Jairus' daughter, without, without even, you know, he was just speaking. And people who were on their deathbed were getting up and being made well. People by just touching the garment of his robe, just the hymn, were being made well. People who had been blind for birth were able to see. The lame were leaping for joy. And now the Greeks have arrived. They represent the rest of the world. Now Jesus knows the whole world. Lord of lords, Lord to all, totally inclusive. Now if the Greeks know, the whole entire world knows who Jesus is and what's going on. Jesus says, my hour has come. Time's up. Then, then he begins to explain to them that it's time for him to be glorified. And then they roll into all of this where there's this theophany, that means the voice of God, the O's God, that this theophany that they hear this speaking. And he then tells them that it's not for me, it's for you, that it's important that you come to hear and to see and to know and to believe in what is taking place and what is happening here. And it's time for you to get plugged in. That's a good term, isn't it? Y'all hear about Gracie Allen? You know, not like George Burns would like. At one time she called the clock repairman and she said, uh, if you would come over and, and find out what's wrong with my clock. So the clock repairman came in and he takes her electric clock and he begins to look at it and he fiddles with it and so forth. And then he said, Well, Miss Allen, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with your clock. So I don't know why, uh, other than the fact that it wasn't plugged in, and she said, oh, well, I only plug it up when I want to know what time it is. <laughs> I predict our attendance here for Easter will be greater than our average throughout the year. They will be people who will want to plug up when it's time. When it's time, before the buzzer blower times up, they'll want to plug in. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that. He had been there in Jerusalem and Galilee, and he had done and done all of this ministry, but now the Greeks show up. They want to plug in. They want to plug in. They, they want to meet for themselves. This itinerant preacher dude that they've been hearing all of these unbelievable things about. Jesus shares with them what's important for us. All through, again and again, we read these metaphoric stories we read these allegories and we try to say, uh, what in the world is he talking about? But this one for us, and probably for them as well, because many of us have gardened or farmed or at least at some point in time, if it was merely just cutting the pumpkin on the porch and spilling a seed uh, there and seeing a plant come up and another pumpkin on the vine, 
and then from the one seed, many seeds. We understand this analogy. It's not rocket science. We understand, as I explained to the, to the children, that one grain of corn. You ever look at a dried grain of wheat or corn or, or some type of grain and think about it being alive? It's dry. It looks dead to me. Watch it as long as you want, it probably won't move. It doesn't seem to ever change. It's the same size and so forth until what Jesus says it's buried. Uh, until it's put in a place to where all of a sudden it can begin a transformation in life. And then through that, through that transformation, all of a sudden this kernel, this grain, this single grain sprouts forth. Are you with me? I think you are. I'm hearing some. Some of you need to hold your ears. Listen to me. It's by allowing the Spirit and the love of God to come into us. That that's you know we don't have to wait till we're dead and planted. Okay. What he's saying is. Those who hold on to being exactly as they are, exactly as they have always been, will only be that. There will be no change until we allow the Holy Spirit, the love of God, to begin to water us, nurture us, and make us literally transform. To, to burst out, to sprout, and to begun, begin to become who it is that God needs us to be. In reality, as I spoke to the children and I talked loud to them, they hear the best of anybody in the room. But I talked loud to them because I wanted you to hear this. And I've told you, and, and now I'm telling you, I might tell you again. There was one Jesus. There was one Jesus. One Son of God. And as good as it seemed, and maybe even possible, that, that God could have just kept Jesus here uh, in like Methuselah or some of those other dudes, you know, just on and on and on and on and on as a physical, you know, and somehow, but God knew that's not what was needed. God knew what was needed was for everybody, for everybody to become a part of this body of Christ. Christ literally means Messiah, Savior. That everybody needed to become a moral agent. They needed to become part of this so that it could multiply just like the single grain. Several years ago.